Okay, I'm here with James. Check him out in the back. Hello. Yeah, so stick with me on this one if you can. This one might be a little bit long and there's gonna be a lot of information in a very short period of time, but this one is a great training video for just home inspectors or home buyers in general. So stick with me. I'm gonna go through each problem individually as we go and I'm gonna to try to explain the long-term effects of each of these issues. All right, let's go check it out. So right here, we have new hardy plank on the back and at the top here, you can see that it wasn't attached very well. Right now, it could work a little bit, but over time, high winds will start to break this apart and they'll rattle and fall out of place and eventually cause water damage on the inside of the property. So uh, next spot here, I'm not sure how this camera lighting will work, but we'll just work with it, is right here in this chimney. And you can see where the water lines are been rolling down the chimney in this exact spot. So you always wanna focus in on where heavy amounts of water travel and you wanna start you know, thinking about how the water's traveling. And then right here, you can see they used a lot of caulking. I'll do my best to get the photos in there. And um, you can see that they installed some step flashing there with no counter flashing. So this area might not be leaking right now, but it will eventually leak. So we're gonna call this out. We're gonna recommend a reset and replace the, the flashing around the chimney. You can also see a spot right here in the chimney where it's going to leak. And then also we wanna ins better install this counter flashing in this area here. Okay, this next idea is, is as you approach a property, you always wanna be thinking about how the water is traveling away from the structure. And then even right here, you can see that most of this structure is sitting below grade. So this will come into play whenever we move inside of the home. I'm kind of just hooking a, a left around the exterior of the home, and then I'm gonna work my way back around, and then we'll work our way inside. And you can kind of see why this property right here is not it's not performing properly we are getting moisture readings inside and your property needs to have a better drainage plan <laughs> fixing this is a lot of work You're, what they would have to do is they would have to like dig up the soils put in vapor barriers in place re-put the soil back in so you calling out negative drainage or poor drainage or water entering the property right here you could save your client or save the client you know, thousands of dollars just with for water mitigation. This side of the property is actually where it's at its worst. You can kind of see there's nowhere for the water to go in this area and they even Prior owners tried to fix it by adding in this makeshift drainage system here. And you can even see in the back here where they're trying to add in some sort of surface drain system, but there is nowhere for the water to go in this property and it is making it inside. Next find's kind of funny. Uh, home inspector fixer. Ah, here you go. Check this out. They just added wood shims in the place so I guess they ran out of window shims and they were just crammed some wood in the uh, the window there. Shame. <laughs> we're not being picky, this is serious issues, you know, this is an easy area for insects, mice, water for the most important part, you know, this is not done correctly. Step up your game, flippers, step up your game. Further investigation, this isn't even wood, this is like that composite stuff for like baseboards. This would rot in like like 10 days just of water contact. So you know, stuff like this, I know this is a seems bad, but it really isn't. These light fixtures are pretty cheap to install to replace, but you know, this is something that can easily be knocked out to give a property better image. But really what I'm more concerned about is the siding here. You can see that this wood siding is starting to pull loose in several areas. And it only takes just a little bit, just a, a, pair, a small spot for water and weather to make it in your structure, and that's when you get the most issues. But you're gonna start to see a cycle where all I do is talk about water. That is the number one issue with your properties. That's what you wanna take care of.
Next area right here, if you can really see this, all they did is just put about a fat one inch bead caulking with this window. So yes, of course, this is not leaking right now, but it will only take less than a year for your window to not be leaking. So they didn't install the shims properly and they're just relying on a bead of caulking to uh, keep this window seal. A real window being installed properly would not require any caulking at all if it you want the caulking is just a a secondary measure for your windows so you know keep your windows tight and sealed is this is not the right way to do it next area you can see this area between the transition between the brick and the the wood siding you can see the trim piece went missing i'm not sure how the lighting is working but you can see right here that you have water penetration points across this whole wall right here so it would only require one rain before you started seeing water stains in this uh new freshly painted flip home okay the next area is in the garage pretty easy spot but we have termite damage across a huge portion of the the wall here one thing you want to know about inspectors is i can't see behind this wall so i don't know how bad it is so the best thing i can do is say there's significant termite damage in the garage further evaluation and needed you know you might be able to ask them if you can remove drywall but typical answer will probably be no so they you have to the client has to understand that there's going to be termite um, damage in the garage and they want to move forward but one thing is is a lot of this looks old and it's been knocked down or painted but the biggest thing is is you can see a fresh ah, my lanyard sorry you can see a fresh uh, termite tube at the top so we know that these guys are active so let me move in up here you can see right there so with that fresh termite tube being there we know they might have they could have treated we don't know the full story but we know that we need to come back in and treat and this plays into the poor drainage the high soil all around the property and this is a perfect environment termites like shade moisture wood wood to ground contact they have all of that here in a perfect environment so you can see they went to town in this area Okay, so we have a, a water heater here. We obviously have a few things here. The TMP is traveling up. This flex vent is, is allowed, but it's not allowed to travel through walls. But what is not allowed is how it is touching. There's not a one inch clearance around it. And then also how it is tied together here. It's not properly tied together. So it's a possibility that it can come apart real easy or leak. And that's the last thing we want. But also another thing that can tell us the story here is we have galvanized water lines in the house. So this is when we want to start really paying attention to leaks in the condition of the galvanized water lines. Um, real easy if you're a home buyer and you're trying to figure out how bad it is, just go on and turn the hot water on and that's where you get most of the low pressure in the property. And if you get some low pressure, it's a good chance the galvanized water lines are coming close to the end of their life. Another thing, and one more thing in the garage before we leave, you can see right here, the uh, we have open-ended wires. And you wanna be real careful when you're walking around properties, you'd be, especially in the attic area, you'd be surprised how often we come across these and they're live. So it uh, can get pretty da dangerous. So remember, when you're walking through a property, always stay slow and steady and um, just try to stay vigilant. Quick break, if you like these types of videos, please hit that like and subscribe button and uh, catch us on the next one. But right here, moving right into it, right here, this is the type of moisture meter I, I use this. I think it's, some people pronounce it different, but I call it the Prote meter. And it's the Prote meter by SurveyMaster. If you want this tool, it's on our tool list. If you go to the link below or go to our website, we have a tool list of all the tools I use on a home inspection. But uh, right here, and I have a tool breakdown YouTube video too. But you can see what I was talking about, the, the high moisture readings in the wall here. So check this out. I 
I actually noticed that before I even really walked around the exterior of the property. Just want you to take a look at this baseboard as I scan across it. I want to show you what a dry baseboard looks like and then what a wet baseboard looks like. The difference is, is really small, but as you're in the field more, it just sticks out like a sore thumb. <laughs> and James was like, how'd you do that? I'm like, it is what it is, man. All right, that's the wet one. So here's the, the dry baseboard. And then I'll do it again, do it again, here you go. And then there's the dry one again. This is dry. So those uh, baseboards are actually wet along the whole wall, all through the living room and all through the kitchen. So we're, we have all that high soil. Um, moisture's making it into the property over here. Okay, moving into the bathroom here. Uh, we have this nice tile shower here. And, but one thing we're gonna write up is this door because you know you, someone like tugging on this, this is the glass door this door would only need to be offset just a little bit you can shatter that whole glass door so we're going to recommend this but one thing that we do do every time is we load up the shower pan with this uh, shower pan tester and uh, you can find these on showerpantester.com my father owns it and he makes me pay full price for these so I do not get a deal because of family. So you should talk to him about that. Uh, but right here, what we're doing is we're testing it up. It needs to hold about two inches of water. We let it sit for just a little bit and then we scan it with a thermal underneath with this type of flip. Just a guess, my guess is it's probably gonna leak. I'm jumping around a bit. I forgot to talk about the Federal Pacific Panel Box. Federal Pacific Panel Box is an obsolete old panel box. End of life, they're known to be related to fires causing in homes. There's also aluminum wiring, loose breakers in here, but there's also copper wires in here. So if there's copper and aluminum, this is something that you wanna be very close pay attention to is sometimes they will use the wrong type of outlet in the walls or uh, they will splice copper and aluminum together and that heats up very quickly. You can catch, it's impossible for an inspector to go through and try to find all these splices, but how we detect them is we use the infrared flares and we'll scan each outlet. And then the hot one, that's normally the one that it's not wired properly. But with aluminum wiring, I'll go over there and hit an outlet for you in a second, but that's where it's not tied into the outlet properly and um, it, there's no antioxidant gel and that can cause issues down the line too. So we're gonna recommend for an electrician, we always recommend to replace FPE, Zinco, and Sylvania panel boxes. So if you see any of those three name brands you're looking at, maybe around a $1,500 to $2,000 bill to just replace your panel box. So you can see right here, showing up in the FLIR, this could be either cold air, moisture, but the main thing is, is it's sending off alarm signs right here. So you, we do have a heavy area of cold air so we needed, this is where I found the moisture outside. So I know it's moisture. I just wanted to show you the image of what it looks like on a FLIR camera. Let's come out, so let's come over here real quick. To, oh yeah, you can see all of it, all this cold air coming in. Or cold air, sorry, <laughs> moisture, <laughs> moisture. It's not really that cold outside. Oh, check out that. Coming in around the window. All right. all right, here's that window area. So I always, you always wanna double check and back up with your moisture meter. So I'm just gonna make sure it's on the right setting, make sure it's working. Oh, nah. Nope, didn't get anything. So that's probably just cold air. All right, the flippers beat me on this one, except for the door. I'm not a fan of the door, but uh, got me, but you always want to make sure you come back for your shower pan stuffer. We did not find any water leaks below it. It is a well-installed shower pan. Like what I like to say, today. <laughs> yeah, so right here, you always want to go back for this because if you purchase things, they are a little pricey. They're about 20 bucks, $25. So with that being said, 
You don't want to leave $20 of your inspection at the house. I think I'm going to close it out there. There are a lot of other little things that we could hit on this one, but the big thing is we caught the major stuff. So we need an electrician, we need a plumber, we need a roofer, we need a termite technician to come up in here and bring this up to par. Um, we need to fix the grading too as well. So our inspection is important, yes. But one of the things that you want to get be aware of is I know that you like this property. You got to the point to where we're here. You want to try to remove the emotion out of it. Try to listen to your home inspector. Listen to what he's saying. Go back home. Do the numbers. See if um, they can meet your budget or your tolerances. And if they can, then you move on with the property or you don't. You know, you and your agent talk about it. And if it doesn't or doesn't meet your needs, it's not the end of the world. There's thousands of other homes out there. So that's it. That's Chris with A Action. If you have any home inspection questions, please give us a call. Please hit that like, subscribe button, and leave me a comment of any type of content that you want to see, and I'll try to hit it. All right, thanks, guys. Bye.